And our next guest was young. He loved watching Sea Hunt and the silent world of Jacques Cousteau. In fact, it inspired him so much that he spent his career traveling all around the world filming Life Under the Sea. Please welcome to Great Day Houston. Paul Carter Deaton. Peter Deaton. Peter Deaton, thank you, you got it. Um, Hi, thanks. It, 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 it's so interesting to me how the ocean, because it's below, most of us never kind of think about it, right? Yeah. And then when you go there, it is the most amazing another world. It is. It, it's, it, it is simply amazing, and, and I just can't get enough of it. Uh, one of the things that, that we try to do as underwater filmmakers is to bring a greater understanding of what's going on down there because we know more about the surface of the moon than we know yeah. about the underwater realm on our own planet. Still a lot of mystery there. Some of the, the, the Marianas Trench, probably the deepest part. Yep. Yeah. And we and the animals down there are very different looking from what we've been able to figure out. Totally different. Deep sea hot water vents that would just scald pretty much anything if it, if they got in the way, but right on the rims of them there is life and it's just an amazing thing. Yeah. We're amazed by the dinosaurs, but really <laughs> life started millions of years before in the ocean. Yep, that's right. We all sprang from the ocean. Okay. The international adventure travel that you've done, you have filmed on six different continents. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The only one that I haven't gone to is uh, Antarctica, and uh, I, I, I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it still has life up there, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, your underwater film shoots, you've done more than 5,300 dives. Mm -hmm. You do commercials, music videos. You, your work has appeared on all kinds of networks. Uh, tell us about Nemo's Garden. Nemo's Garden is an extraordinary place. I get my inspiration from different places, and I read an article in uh, Atlas Obscura about this underwater gardening uh, project. It's an experiment that they have going on in the Ligurian Sea. You can see it on, on your screen. Yeah. And they actually grow, it's sort of like an undersea aquarium or a terrarium. Uh -huh. And the condensation creates its own fresh water. They do have to add nutrients because it's really kind of distilled by nature. And uh, this is uh, Gianni Fontanesi, who's the project director. And he is uh, checking the basal. And let me tell you, I wish that it were uh, that, that it was possible to have smell-o-vision because the, the, the aroma in there is absolutely intoxicating. Well, it, 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 kind of like when you go through fresh farmer's markets when you really smell this yeah. like, nutrient-dense uh, plant, if you will. Yeah, but it, it seems heightened uh, perhaps because it, 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 the uh, the concentration of the sense. Yeah, well, it's interesting because you know the opposite side of that is we, there's certain things that we can do in space with zero gravity, and yeah. so this is a different atmosphere to do things in. And at some point, people could actually do farming under the under the water in the yeah. ocean. Okay, yeah. the secret underwater wine cellar. Now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, this is another another thing that I got my inspiration from a, a magazine. Um, in, in this case, it was Condé Nast Traveler. And I found out about these guys who, uh, it, they have a company called Edivo Vina. It's a winery in Croatia. And they, they are both divers. It's Eddie Vajurin and uh, Ivo Segovic. And uh, they call their company Edivo Vina. That's Evo right there, opening up one of the uh, amphorae. And that's the cool thing about it. They, they bottle their wines, and in addition to aging it, in conventional subterranean uh, cellars. They also encase the, the bottles inside those ancient looking clay amphorae, as, the, as you can see there, yeah. and then let them age underwater in a very constant year-round temperature and relative darkness and it's just a perfect idea, a perfect situation, and it's very, uh, it's got a historical component. Fascinating place, yeah. and love me some Croatia. Yeah, it's a whole different idea of a winery, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay, um, I, when I told a couple people you were coming on the show, they said, oh, can you ask them for us, please? Okay, so one thing was Bermuda Triangle. Never been there. I can neither confirm I don't know nor if deny. I would go, sir. Yeah, right. <laughs> the other was Atlantis, the missing city under the sea. <laughs> Never been there either. I've stayed at a, at a resort called Atlantis in the Philippines and love it. It's yeah. a great place. It's like my island away from Ireland. Uh, but no, I haven't been to either of those mythical places. Yeah, mythical places. All right, so Jenny and Bob, there you go. Okay. Sorry, uh, Jenny You just and did Bob. a TED Talk on shark prevention, and, and the sharks are one of those creatures. You know, we've seen the movies and the whole bit. And of course, when you have it in the headlines, you know, there were three uh, shark attacks this, this uh, just the past few days, actually. Mm -hmm. And so people are thinking that the sharks are out to get us, and you're like, 
not so. No, I mean, sharks are dangerous, certainly, as, as you can tell by, by the, the attacks that happen. But this is almost always just the wrong, wrong place, wrong time, mistaken identity. Uh, it's, uh, it's an occurrence of um, opportunism for the, on the part of the shark. Yeah. If somebody's out there with a string or a fish or something like that, the shark goes, oh, yeah, awesome. And they come and get part of a human arm or something and go, oh, ooh, you know. <laughs> So, you know, they, they, don't, they don't target us. They don't hunt us. No, yeah. no. Yeah, there were 2,778 confirmed unprovoked shark attacks between 1958 and 2014, mm -hmm. about 500 fatalities. But the point you're making, if you are a shark in the ocean, that your job is to find food all day. Yeah, and right. You have somebody who's on a surfboard, and you see, like, oh, there's four good pieces of fish that are paddling in the water. There's a great example of that at Moody Gardens on, on Galveston, where they have some silhouettes. A surfer on a board right next to a sea lion lion and they, they look almost identical and so when when a shark looks up and sees that you know they go mm hmm yeah it's that's, time. Some, that's some takeout for me baby you all know, right so. so we've always been told that if, if a shark came up on you that you just punch it in the nose well, is that mythical or what you know that that has actually happened and uh, the, very famously I think it was last year a man uh, saved his daughter from a from a shark by by punching it and so that's that's an uh, an answer better left to you know somebody from MMA or something. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But uh, you, you know, do whatever you can, honestly. I mean, if, if something like that happens, it's it's rare. I mean, it, it, let's face it. You there are there's a better chance of getting killed by a champagne cork than there is. <laughs> no, really. Than, yeah. than there is uh, getting bitten by a shark. I mean, yeah. Coke machines. Because the stats I mentioned earlier was 1958 is when they started uh, tracking that. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's been a while. Yeah. Okay. Um, with that said, sharks have have been kind of like the, more afraid of us, really, yeah. because uh, people will use them for their for soups or for their you know their skin and all types of things. To the point where, and we know that we eat animals, but to the point where they're being threatened. Yeah, humans in in about 150 years have un, have begun to undo something which took nature 450 million years to perfect. How arrogant are we? To, to do something like that for soup. Oh, this makes me look cool, you know. <laughs> if you want to look cool, come down with us and, and, uh, and get this close to a tiger shark. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's the way real men shoot sharks. Oh, is with wow. a camera. Because <laughs> <laughs> it kind of, it, I mentioned earlier, I think kind of out of sight, out of mind until we take a trip to the beach. Yeah, exactly. That, that ecosystem that's part of a very valuable, viable ecosystem that if we upset, things can get crazy for yeah, us. Yeah, people, people make the mistake of thinking that the underwater realm and, and the, the ocean in general, uh, that, that taking care of it is just kind of a, you know, zen, tree-huggy kind of thing. And they think that balance, oh, come on, that's that's just so, you know, yeah. tree huggy, but you got to take care of it because most of our oxygen comes from the ocean. You know, people go, oh, rainforest, rainforest. Well, yeah, a bunch of it does obviously come from the rainforest, yeah. but most of it comes from the oceans. And if you, if you continue to use, as Dr. Sylvia Earle says, if you continue to use your, your refrigerator as a restroom, you're going to mess everything up really bad. I'm, I'm paraphrasing yeah, there yeah. for Dr. Earl. But, um, uh, and it's true. People think, oh, the ocean's so vast, that we can't possibly damage it. I'm tossing this scowl full of garbage into it. That's a really bad idea, yeah. you know, because uh, there's only so much. You know, a trash can can only f fill up so much before it starts spilling over and causing problems. Mm. All right, and, and I'm going to look up in uh, Webster's uh, tree huggy because if it's not in there, I'm going to send it in. Is, a, is, a, is that an adjective or is that a? Yeah, that's an adjective. Okay, okay. tree huggy. Okay, I like All right. that. Yeah. All right. Give me a citation, though. <laughs> <I will. Okay. laughs> well, for more information on Paul Cater Deaton, log on to his website. We also have a link on our site, greatdayhouston.com. Just really beautiful, beautiful pictures. Thank you for bringing us what most of us will never, ever get a chance to see. Thank you very much. Can I say something about your audience? I'm glad this isn't Star Trek because <laughs> almost all of y'all wouldn't make it off the Planet Alive. <laughs> we'll be Thanks right you back. Guys. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah.